Open your Bibles, please, to Exodus chapter 28. Brother McGovern, this is a beautiful church you have here. What beautiful families. Look at all the young people out there. Wow. It's great. Now, we are in the woods of Maine, and it can be rather discouraging. We prayed for years. I've been there 17 years at Lee in Maine. We prayed for years that we might get 20 in our prayer meeting. And we have had, uh, just in a couple of years, we've had 20 in prayer meeting, uh, even almost 31 a couple times, which is like, wow. Um, and this is really wow. This is very encouraging. All the churches I know in Maine, and we have a retreat ministry and fellowship with several churches. And all the churches I know in Maine um, would be pretty similar to ours in size, except for, you know, because you know uh, Jordan and Heather, uh, at uh, Philbrick's Church in Clinton, Maine. I grew up in that church. And um, they would have a good, uh, larger ministry there. But this is beautiful. And we got a message tonight. I've never preached before, uh, preached this message before. Um, I've preached touching on this topic but never preached a whole message on this. And it's going to be maybe a message that parents will have to, you're going to say, the kids are going to say, what was he talking about? What was he saying? And your parents, you get to teach it again when you get home, maybe. Uh, before we get started, I want to say that uh, we came up here as a gift from our children, they chip together. It's our 30th wedding, and we're celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. Because the greatest thing that we could think of was to come see our grandchildren, Enoch and Ethan, and to see uh, Daniel's new bride and the beautiful family God has blessed them with, and so happy for them. Is so happy for them. And I also uh, should say, want to say, uh, thank this church for all your prayers and cards and notes and different things uh, when our Heidi went to be with the Lord. And um, just so thankful, thank, very thankful for... Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ that were such a comfort at that time. Uh, we love Daniel. We miss him in our church. Uh, just such a good man. And miss him in all our family gatherings. Um, the Lord knows all about it. So, Exodus, well, uh, Exodus 28. Before we read our passage, I do want to say that uh, we're very thankful for you, you letting us use the church van. That's a huge blessing. We got to call and cancel the rental vehicle, and that was a huge blessing. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 29 and 30 says, And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. Thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim. The Urim and the Thummim. That's what I'm preaching on tonight, if you can believe it. I've never, I can't remember my life hearing a message on the Urim and Thummim. I can't remember it being mentioned. But 
We're going to look at five lessons from the Urim and Thummim concerning the will of God. It says, And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and Thummim. They shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding the Urim and Thummim. Uh, Urim means lights, and Thummim means perfection. So it's light and perfections. And exactly what they were, we really aren't told exactly like their makeup or what they were. And there's uh, some speculation when you read Bible commentaries. But we do know that they were used to find the will of God. They were used to find the will of God. And we're going to ask the Lord to help us as we look into God's word tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for your help, that you would open our eyes, help us to see the beautiful truths, beautiful lessons in your word concerning the Urim and Thummim and in your will, and pray that you bless your word tonight. Pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us and that your Holy Spirit would help me as I preach. In Jesus' name, amen. The Urim and Thummim. The Urim and Thummim, uh, especially you young people, the, the, the garments of the high priest had a breastplate. And the breastplate would be, uh, it says four square, a span square. It's about... I have small hands, but from your thumb to your finger, and then square, it would be, my big Bible is about a span wide, uh, but it's a little bit longer, but, oh, covering the microphone there. Um, so, the breastplate's almost as big as my Bible, and the Bible tells us in Numbers 27, verses 21 through 23, that Joshua, well, you can uh, keep your fingers in Numbers 28 and look over to, uh, in Exodus 28, look over at Numbers 27. Numbers 27, verse 21, it says, And he, talking about Joshua, shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. At his word shall they go out, and at his word shall they come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, the Bible tells us that Saul, Saul asked counsel uh, at the Urim, and then in Ezra chapter 2, verse 63, uh, Ezra mentioned that the people should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with the Urim and Thummim. And today, the Lord Jesus is our high priest that has stood up with, the, you may say, uh, typologically, with the Urim and Thummim. It's that... It's in the Lord Jesus that we see the will of God. And the Bible makes it clear that Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our high priest. All these pictures with the breastplate, the Urim and Thummim, and the beautiful garments, they're all pointing to the Lord Jesus, picturing the Lord Jesus. And he is our high priest. If you still keep your finger in Exodus chapter 28, turn to Hebrews Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 says, But Christ being, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, so, the old, uh, so much greater, the Lord Jesus, so much greater than all the things in the tabernacle, all those things pictured in the Lord Jesus, he is so much greater, it says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkle in the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, 
How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews makes it so clear that Jesus is our high priest and the Old Testament priesthood has passed away and Jesus is our only way to heaven. And he sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat. It's only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we're saved. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And today, whenever you hear of uh, a church or a denomination or a religion that has a priest, then beware, watch out, run the other direction, because the Bible makes it clear, Jesus is our priest. And in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. So all these pictures of the priest calling point to the Lord Jesus. And we want to turn back to and zero in now on our lessons. We have five lessons from the Urim and the Thummim. Five lessons from the Urim and the Thummim. And first of all, number one, number one, the will of God, the will of God comes from a heart of love for his people. The will of God, sometimes, you, especially when you're a young person, if you're a teenager, you say, oh, I want to do the will of God, but I don't know. I don't know what the Lord might do. It's kind of scary. Uh, well, the will of God comes from a heart of love for his people. Because the Bible pictures it here, the breastplate, that breastplate of judgment. The Lord Jesus took the judgment of our sin upon himself. And the breastplate, we see the a description of this blessed breastplate. Look back in verse 15, verse 15 of Exodus 28. It says, Thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment. And we said, the Lord Jesus takes our judgment for our sin. And also in the Lord Jesus, um, we find judgment as far as uh, decisions we have to make. He will guide us. He will lead us. And that Urim and Thummim was put right inside the breastplate. It slid in there, and like we said, we know it means lights and perfections. Jesus is our light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and Jesus is perfect without sin. And some say it also parallels the word of God, and that that Urim and Thummim might have even had scripture written on it, because God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and God's word is perfect. But whatever it exactly was... We know it was in the breastplate, and we know that it's all pointing towards the Lord Jesus, and we know that the breastplate here was a beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It says, uh, "Thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work." Cunning work. There's a lot of love, a lot of love that went into making this breastplate. A lot of work. Uh, love takes a lot of work, and it says, "After the work of the ephod, the ephod." It uh, says, thou shalt make, uh, after the work of the ephod, thou shalt make it. There's all these beautiful colors of gold, pictured a uh, deity, of uh, blue, pictures the Lord Jesus' mission to take us to heaven. Jesus said, I came down from heaven. Of uh, purple, pictures that Jesus is our king, it pictures royalty. Of uh, scarlet, pictures the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for our sin. That fine twine linen, pictures righteousness, the righteousness of the Lord, we're only righteous when we receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior. And um, in the ephod, in the ephod, these things are all woven, all these colors are woven together. And the gold, the gold was beaten out 
If you can imagine, they, they, they beat the gold out into, into like wires, and then they wove it into the material. But that breastplate, it's four score, so I said it's a little bit smaller than my Bible, and it hung around, it hung around the high priest's neck. And in verse 17 it says, uh, And thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row, and we won't go through all the stones, but 12 stones that are depicting the 12 tribes of Israel. But those beautiful gems on the breastplate are picturing God's people and how beautiful God's people are and how the Lord loves his people. And it pictures the tribes, the tribes of Israel. You know, when you read, you go back to, we won't take the time tonight, you go back to read Genesis 49, and it gives, uh, uh, Jacob gives a prophecy concerning his sons. And some of those sons uh, were rascals. Uh, They were just, how he could bless them. You wonder, how on earth could he bless these boys? The things that they did. Uh, God loves his people, and the blood of the Lord cleanses us from sin. And that breastplate, you could say, was the most beautiful piece of family jewelry that could ever be. You know, a lot of late, my brother's a jeweler. Uh, ladies will come in, and they'll want a special mother's ring with gems all around. One, uh, you know, birthstones for every child. Or they'll want to buy a, a pendant with, well, sometimes they'll have little dangly uh, children figures with gems on each one with their birthstone. And to think that God told Moses, I want you to clothe the priest, the high priest in this way, and I want this beautiful piece of jewelry Great big, you know, talk about gummy jewelry. It made a statement. God is making a statement that he loves his people. He cares about his people. And he doesn't make a statement like uh, my son Heath, he joined the volunteer fire department last winter, and he went and ordered uh, T-shirts that... Uh, the back of the t-shirt shirt, so if he's standing beside the road directing traffic during a fire, he has a great big letters, you know, fire rescue. And so people know right away. Uh, kids that play sports, they get a uniform and have their team name on them. Well, God said, I want my high priest, which pictures the Lord Jesus, that loves his people so much. I want him to have that beautiful piece of jewelry My people are gems. They're beautiful. They're valuable. Uh, Gems that they're supposed to complement one another. Uh, They're all important. They're priceless to me. And the Lord Jesus laid down his life for us, died for us. But the amazing thing is, think about something. We studied the breastplate. We skim right over, skim right over this Urim and Thummim. The Urim and Thummim slid right into that breastplate. And it shows us that the, and it pictures the will of God. They use the Urim and Thummim to find the will of God. And it pictures that the will of God comes from a heart of love for his people. God's heart of love for his people. And it says in verse 29, and Aaron, and Aaron pictures the Lord Jesus as our high priest, so bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. You, if you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you are on God's heart. You are on God's heart. When he goeth in unto the holy place for a mor- memorial before the Lord, it says continually, continually. Brother McGovern, is that my water? Oh, good. I need that. Thank you very much. That's all right. I, I heard your statistics on the Cronus. I'm not, I'm not worried. <laughs> so, 
So, secondly, the will of God. You know, so, uh, especially a young person, and you're thinking, what am I going to do with my life? And I, w- I want to follow God. I-, I want the will of God. Well, second lesson we learn here is the will of God is found in Jesus. The will of God is found in Jesus, our high priest. The high priest had the Urim and Thummim in, his, in the, the breastplate on his heart. And so, young person, if you want the will of God for your life, you just follow the Lord Jesus. You just follow the Lord Jesus. It's the will of God for salvation. For sal- salvation. Uh, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation. And uh, I've got so many verses that uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of skim these points. I have uh, the will of God for sanctification. For sanctification, the Bible tells us, "For this is the will of God, even your sanctification." In First Thessalonians four thirteen, you you find that in the Lord Jesus when you receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and then He just starts cleaning your life up as you walk with him, as you live for him. The will of God concerns service. Well, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, what area does he want me in? Well, just follow the Lord Jesus. You just follow him. If you follow your high priest, the Lord Jesus, then you'll find, you'll find his will. If you're following other things, if you're trying to think, rationalize things, or if you're thinking, well, it's education, you follow Jesus first, he'll show you where he wants you and how he wants you to be educated. But the will of God is in the Lord Jesus. It is wrapped up in the Lord Jesus. Third thing, third lesson about the will of God that we see from the Urim and Thummim is the will of God was Jesus' all-consuming goal. The will of God was Jesus' all-consuming goal. And God, in his wisdom, as he pictured the Lord Jesus in the garments of the high priest, he had that Urim and Thummim in the breastplate so that as the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat, he was doing the will of God. He's following the will of God. Jesus' all-consuming goal was to follow the will of God, to do the will of God. Turn back to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Jesus' very purpose in coming to earth was to do the will of God. And in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 5, it says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hadst had no pleasure. Jesus didn't come to be an Old Testament type high priest. He came to be the fulfillment, to lay down his own body. And the Bible says God gave him a body for that purpose, to be the sacrifice for our sins. Verse 7 says, Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. In verse 9, it says, And then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Verse 10, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once for all. We've got that wonderful song. Once for all, O sinner, believe it. Once for all, O sinner, receive it. And... You believe on the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and you're saved once for all. But Jesus was consumed with doing the will of God. In John chapter 4, in verse 34, he said it was his meat. It was his meat to do the will of God. Uh, Look in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. In verse 30. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. 
are we like the Lord Jesus in that? I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And verse 38, Jesus said, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. This is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. But Jesus came to do his Father's will. And Matthew 26, verse 39, we know Jesus said, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt, as he is praying in the garden and going to the cross. And so, beautiful picture in God's word, that breastplate, that beautiful breastplate filled with gems representing his people. Our high priest, the Lord Jesus, has people in his heart just continually, and he fulfilled God's will. The will of God. God was Jesus' consuming goal. Number four. Number four. The will of God calls us to prayer. The will of God calls us to prayer. Now, we need to remember that. That beautiful breastplate with all those gems representing God's people was over what? It was over the ephod. The ephod was a prayer vest. The ephod basically was a prayer vest. It was an intercessory prayer vest. And it pictures the Lord Jesus interceding for his people, praying for his people. And God's will is inside that breastplate, and it's on that prayer vest. And the prayer vest is up on the robe, the blue robe, that blue robe, uh, blue pictures, uh, Jesus came down from heaven, and he's on a mission to save souls, to save you and me. He's on a mission. That prayer vest sits upon the robe of blue, emphasizing his mission, and the Urim and Thummim are in that breastplate, and just all stressing it's God's will. It's God's will. He loves his people so much. And he's praying for them. He's interceding for them. I love uh, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 59. Turn to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59, ver verse 14, sounds like it was written today. Uh, it says, as judgment is turned away backward, justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter, yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and he wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. You say, therefore the Lord Jesus Christ arose. He arose, he came to be our intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. And he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. And the Lord Jesus came to intercede for us. And he prays for us. He prays his uh, high priest intercessory prayer in the Gospel of John and goes to the cross for us. And the will of God calls, it called Jesus to pray and intercede for us. The will of God, if you're seeking the will of God, it drives you to your knees. You've got to pray. And uh, if you're following the, word, the will of God and things happen and you just drives you to your knees, and you pray, and Jesus intercedes for us, we should be in interceding for others. Also, it shows us that, you know, love should drive prayer. Love should drive prayer. You know, why are prayer meetings all across the United States, so many of them closing down? 
Why are so many uh, prayer meetings empty, uh, poorly attended? Lack of love. Lack of love for one another. That breastplate, that beautiful breastplate, representing God's people, Urim and Thummim placed inside of that, stressing the will of God, put upon that prayer vest, and our high priest, the Lord Jesus, praying for people, loving people. And so many Christians today, oh, I, I remember inviting a man that came out to church to prayer meeting, and he said, what do I got to pray for? He said, what have I got to pray for? Well, all God's people, your brothers and sisters in Christ, and then to pray for lost souls, for God so loved the world. The will of God calls us to prayer. Last thing that we see about the Urim and, and Thummim, learn about the will of God, number five, the will of God tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. The will of God tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now, where do you find that in the Urim and Thummim? Well, back up, and there is, let's see, one, two, three, four. You start in verse 22. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is seven verses talking about the chains and the rings that bind the breastplate to the high priest's heart. The chains and rings that bind the breastplate to the heart of the high priest. And the will of God is inside there. Turn back to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We read that verse quickly. John chapter 6, verse 38. You're going to want to uh, later on read those verses that talk about all the chains and the rings. It's interesting that the chains on the top of the breastplate, they didn't go around the neck. They went to the shoulders, picturing that. You know, some people say, uh, oh, this is just around my neck. This really bothers me. No, the chains went to the shoulder pieces, picturing Jesus shouldered our sin. Jesus shoulders us. Jesus said, you know, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Uh, the Lord Jesus carries us along, and he loves us, and those chains were chained to his shoulder pieces. And then the, the bottom uh, was actually tight, tied, there's chains that go down, but it was tied with lace above the girdle that pictured service. And the Lord just serves us, he loves us. And it is his will that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Repentance, But those that receive the Lord, there's not going to be any cast out. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, nothing can separate you from the love of God. In John chapter 6, verse 38, says, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. This is the will of my Father which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Is not going to lose one because we're chained. We're chained to him in love. Chained in love. We're going to stop right there. But let me repeat. Let me repeat. Next time you hear about this Yerm and Thuman, I hope that you think, of the beautiful pictures. And this is, if you study this, if you meditate on this, I actually uh, narrowed my list down because look, I've already gone too long, I believe. Uh, but number one, the will of God comes from a heart of love for his people. He just loves his people. He loves us. Secondly, the will of God is found in Jesus, a high priest. If you're wondering, how do I find the will of God? Young person, how do I find the will of God? Just love Jesus. Just follow Jesus. 
and he'll open you up. You'll be able to see. He'll guide you. If you love the world and follow the world, you got one foot over here and one foot over there, you're going to have a hard time. You're not going to find God's clear will. You just love him and pray. He'll, he'll direct you to his will. Number three, the will of God was Jesus' all-consuming goal. And the high priest wore that Urim and Thummim in the breastplate as he served, as he went into the Holy of Holies. It is Jesus was all consumed with the will of God. Number four, the will of God calls us to prayer. That breastplate of love with God's will inside, Urim and Thummim inside, was on that intercessory prayer vest. And number four is the will of God tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And you know Romans chapter 8 tells us that. And the breastplate and the will of God, it was all chained right there. Chained there. And we're going to stop right there. that with the uh, Urim and the Thummim, and that's an excellent lesson on how looking at that as